interesting thing about the case for uh, particularly here is is uh, that I had never been a criminal uh, prosecutor or a criminal defense lawyer. I sometimes think of my experience of, was was uh, in the criminal defense work would in Wisconsin was representing somebody who was a good duck hunter, a good fisherman who went out and, and uh, uh, started to sh shoot or fish before uh, the, the time he was, uh, he was supposed to do it. And, and uh, uh, some game warden would bring, him, bring us up before a, uh, a local justice. Pretty, you know, I was a novice at this, uh, at this big conspiracies, and so I said to one of my paralegals to go up to the go up to the law uh, the library and get me uh, some of the cases where prosecutors in the Southern District of New York have tried conser big conspiracy cases. And she went up and she brought back six or seven cases. One of them was the Alger Hiss case. One of them was a case involving the mafia, as I remember it. And, but I read the closing arguments, but they didn't, they didn't fit at all. And then uh, a good fortune hit me. Uh, she went back up and she bought back a two-volume uh, book called The Law is Literature, or something like that. And she gave me the book, and it had pieces by various people. And good, good luck again was there was Justice Jackson's final argument in the Nuremberg case. And also, there was Daniel Webster's opening statement in the in a case involving a murder in Massachusetts, and I read them, and it was just hit me. Just you know, I had I had an opening statement, a, a frame for one, and I had a closing arc, like the ending summation. Daniel Webster here, Mr. Justice Jackson there, and. We then put that together and worked very hard at, at very carefully developing all the circumstantial evidence and the correct, the direct evidence and the corroboration so that we had a good, good story from start to finish. And uh, thank the Lord, the jury returned a verdict of conviction of seven of the, the nine key players just happen to have portions of your closing statement. I wonder if you would read those last two paragraphs, because at least for those who have been Jackson fans, you'll, you'll see the connection. Uh, I think I said, members of the jury, this is an important case. It's important to the government. It's important to the defendants, but most important, it's important to the state of Mississippi. What I say here, what the other lawyers say here today, what the court says about the law will be soon forgotten. But what you 12 people do here today will long be remembered. Then I went on to say the defendants will stand before you on this record in the case and they will beg, beg of you of indulgence. In effect, they will say, as Gloucester said, as he stood over the body of his slain king, say I, say I slew him not. The king replied, then say they were not slain, but they are dead. If you find that these men are not guilty of this conspiracy, it would be as true to say that there was no nighttime release from jail by Cecil Price. There were no white knights. There were no young men dead. There was no murder. If you find that these men are not guilty, you will declare the law of Neshoba County to be the law of the state of Mississippi. It is against such a background that these defendants now ask this tribunal to say that they are not guilty of planning, executing, or conspiring to commit this long list of crimes and wrongs. They stand before the record of this tribunal as bloodstained Gloucester stood by the body of his slain king. 
He begged of the widow, as they beg of you, say, I slew them not. And the queen replied, then say they were not slain, but dead they are. If you were to say of these men that they are not guilty, it would be as true to say that there has been no war, that there are no slain, that there has been no crime.